you guys. We are back. We're going to do a real quick, uh, call it a part two video on dealing with uh, autocorrelation in an OLS model using Stata. Uh, so as you can see, we're going to take a look at the Bruch godfrey test, the logic, the intuition of the test, uh, and then the simple commands to execute it and interpret the results in Stata. So for the purposes of our a little example here, we're going to need to call up some time series data. So let's use some of that example data uh, that is automatically available to us when we download Stata. So we'll use the sysuse command uh, with the SP500. So we've got daily S&P 500 data, uh, the open, the high, the low, the close, the volume, uh, and then the, the change. Uh, so we're not going to do anything about model specification. We're not going to look into all the time series properties, stationarity, all the things you should be doing. We just want some data that probably has autocorrelation so we can apply our test. Uh, so we are going to be using the lag operator, so we do need to declare our data set as time series. So let's go ahead and generate a variable time or trend equal to underscore in TS set time. So again, now Stata knows. Each row in our data set is a different time period denoted by this uh, newly created variable time. Uh, and then we might want to, uh, again, just for the purposes of our, our example here, uh, estimate a model where we're trying to predict the daily close, the level of the S&P, as a function, say, of trade volume. Again, I don't know why you would do this, but let's imagine that we do that. So we've got 248 daily observations and the results all look reasonable, of course, but we are concerned that we have an autocorrelated error term because we are dealing with time series data. So that's where our Bruch Godfrey test comes in. So if we have an original structural model, which in our case is what we just estimated here, it's our y as a function of x over time, and our error term. Uh, we're going to want to estimate an auxiliary test equation wherein the dependent variable is going to be our estimated residual as a function of its own lags. So we see we have the u hat t as a function of u hat t minus 1, t minus 2, dot 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 through t minus p. Uh, and then notice that we're also controlling for the original structural x variables. Right? So let's take a look and see what this would look like. Uh, quote unquote, by hand in Stata. Right? So following our structural model, here the S&P close as a function of volume, let's go ahead and predict the residual. So let's get a U hat comma resid. Uh, and then let's, uh, again, you'd want to put some thought into this and run multiple specifications. But for the purpose of the example, let's run this with two lags in our Bruch godfrey test equation. Right? So we would run uh, a OLS regression of u hat as a function of l dot u hat, so that's the first lag, l2 dot u hat. And then we also want to control for that x variable. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be the, uh, the trade volume. Okay. So think about what we've done here. Uh, if we had a true, well-behaved Gauss-Markov uh, error term, nothing that we put on the right-hand side should have meaningful explanatory power, right? So we should have an R squared of zero following this regression. So let's go ahead and estimate this little auxiliary equation. And we do not have an R squared of zero, right? So we've got an R squared of almost 90% here. Uh, and that, of course, is the indicator that we have an autocorrelation problem. And that, of course, is what we use to generate our, uh, our test statistic, right? applied to the null, that we have no autocorrelation, right? So if we had that perfect, well-behaved Gauss-Markov error, each of those gamma coefficients relating lagged errors to current errors, they should all be zero, right? So what's going to form our test statistic is the sample size in times the r squared within that auxiliary equation, right? And that's going to be our Lagrange multiplier test statistic distributed as a chi-square with p degrees of freedom, where p are the number of lags in the auxiliary equation. So in our case, that's going to be a value of 2. Right? So 
in our little example, see we have our results from our auxiliary test equation, n of 246, the r squared of the 0.8992. We do a little multiplication and we get a uh, chi-square Lagrange multiplier test statistic of a whopping 221. And as we saw from that r squared, we're pretty sure we're going to be in, in trouble here. We are going to be able to reject that null. And we flip to the back of our econometrics book that we always have with us, and we see that the 1% 2 degree of freedom chi-square critical value uh, is about 9.21. So we're a mile and a half past that. So we can strongly reject that null, and we find that we do have uh, significant autocorrelation. Okay, so that's what our Bruce Godfrey test does for us. Let's see how to do it without doing all that work, right, in Stata. So let's go back and call up the original structural model again. So the S&P close as a function of volume. Here's all we really need to know, right? So the post estimation command is E stat B Godfrey. And then we have the option of including multiple lags like we did in our little example. So we would go lag parentheses two. Right? If we don't include that, the default is a one lag auxiliary equation. And here we have, we're rounding error. We were pretty close. Uh, we get our chi-square test statistic of 220 with a p-value of zero out to at least four decimal points. So again, we can strongly reject the null of no autocorrelation beyond 1%. And there you have it. Uh, so obviously, if we had a p-value above 0 0.10, we would not reject the null and come to the opposite conclusion. Right? So there's obviously a lot more going on here in terms of distributional assumptions. Uh, as long as the error term is asymptotically normal, our test statistic will be asymptotically chi-square, and you'll be able to use it. Uh, but again, with time series data, you want to uh, verify stationarity, all those other things. But as far as the mechanics, the logic of the test, there you have it. Hope you found it useful. I'll go ahead and link to my other videos of uh, using the Durbin-Watson test statistic uh, to uh, address the same issue. Uh, and then once you have autocorrelation in time series, how do you fix it? Uh, that's another topic in another video as well. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and thank you guys very much.